Hello everyone and welcome back to session 5 of Nourishing Change presented to you by Oregon Pacific Area Health Education Center. My name is Jamie. We are a hosted agency of Samaritan Lebanon Community Hospital and our grant is funded by the Oregon Community Foundation. This time we have two recipes for you to participate in. We have our returning student, Janie, from Oregon State University, who is in the Dietetics and Nutrition program. Also, we have a new OSU student joining us. Her name is Bridget Brooks. She's also in the Nutrition and Dietetics program. So I'm gonna turn it over to them and hope you enjoy. And here Hi, we go. Hi, my name is Bridget. I'm a dietetic student at OSU, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make chicken wraps. So first, we're gonna go over to our oven and we're gonna preheat it to 425. And while that's heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and take my chicken thighs and prep those. All right, so first I'm gonna take my chicken thighs. I'm just gonna get some of the moisture off of them with some paper towels. I just lay them down. And I have about four of them stacked up here. I'm just gonna take this one and just gently pat away some of that moisture. All right, next up, I'm just gonna pour a little bit of avocado oil into the bottom here. This just kind of helps with getting them brown, make sure that they don't stick. And careful not to rip your foil like I just did. Luckily, I added two layers. And then I'm just gonna put these guys in here. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit more avocado oil just on top here. Just trying to coat them just so that way they get a little more brown. Oops, added a little too much there to that back one. That's okay. Okay. Go ahead and cut it. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to them. With the salt, I like to add it in my hand so that way I'm not putting it directly on the chicken. We don't have a repeat like the avocado oil. <laughs> I'm just gonna gently sprinkle some of this on here. And then I'm gonna flip it over. And do the same thing. Oop, get a little avocado oil on my hands. <laughs> All right. Next up, I'm gonna take a little bit of pepper and I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the salt, just so that way I know I have better control. that on there. This is a really simple seasoning. Cool. So I just did a really simple seasoning of salt and pepper. You're welcome to add maybe a little bit of basil. Um, you could add some cumin, really just whatever you like. Um, I'm doing this because I'm gonna be making a sauce later. So I really want that to be the star of the show here. So right now I'm just kind of trying to make sure that these are all even. So that way they cook a little more evenly. Looks good, doesn't have to look perfect. Next up, I'm gonna pop this into my oven, which is preheated to 425. Just right there in the center. And I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes. Perfect, good job. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna make our dressing, but first we're gonna switch out our cutting boards just to avoid some cross-contamination. I'm gonna wash my hands. Let's just make sure that nobody gets sick. We don't want that. How long do you wash your hands, Bridget? 20 seconds. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's what I like to hear. Just the ABCs. Maybe you have a timer on your watch. <laughs> wow, look at that vigorous hand washing. This girl knows how to wash her hands. Now we're gonna make our creamy basil dressing. Um, I have a jar that I'm gonna label, so that way it's easy storage. But first I'm going to measure out three quarters of a cup of oil. I'm actually cutting this recipe in half. So I'm only gonna measure three ounces. One of the nice things about avocado oil is it's got a higher smoke point than canola oil. It's also got a bunch of polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats. That's the good stuff. Okay, I'm just gonna toss that right in there. And then next up, I'm gonna grab a cup of mayonnaise, but again, I'm cutting this in half, so I'm gonna just give you half of a cup. We might need a spoon, but let's see how far we get. All right, so I got my half cup of mayo, but if you're making the full-scale recipe, you're gonna use one cup. We're gonna carefully get this in here. Of course, it's not gonna be very cooperative. So 
again, we just need one clove of garlic, but since I'm doing this as a half, I'm gonna go for one of these little smaller cloves right here. Personally, I think you should measure garlic with your heart, so feel free to add some extra if you'd like. All right, there we go. So one of the tricks I like to do to getting this peel off the garlic is you're gonna take the side of your knife carefully and you're just gonna use the base of your hand and you're just gonna swish it. And then did you hear that crack? That yeah. That you just <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know if you wanted an answer. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it a little easier to peel. Ooh. Oh, it looks like we got, we got some twins here. <laughs> All right, so now that our garlic is peeled, we're just gonna mince it. First, I wanna get this little nubby off, so we're just gonna go like this. Perfect, set that wherever. We're gonna trash it. And now we're gonna carefully mince our garlic. This is probably going to be an adult job. Um, we're using pretty sharp knives right now, and from experience, cutting your fingertip with some garlic is not a very pleasant experience, so please also be careful. And we're just gonna go like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, we're just trying to finely mince it. If you happen to have some minced garlic in your fridge, feel free to use that. So because this is going into a salad dressing, I'm trying to make sure that I don't have too many big chunks just because while that sounds delicious, it doesn't really make a very uniform dressing, which is kind of what we're going for. So I'm just gonna kind of chop this in all different directions. Garlic actually has quite a bit of potassium in it. So we've got some health benefits there. Also very, very sticky. Um, if you've ever caramelized garlic, this, this makes a lot of sense why it's sticking to my fingers so much. So I'm just gonna do one more pass through with the knife here. All right, so our timer just went off for the chicken. So I'm gonna check that out. So I'm not really seeing any browning. So I think I'm gonna give it about four more minutes. All right, so now we're gonna add our freshly minced garlic into our jar here. And it is very sticky, as I mentioned before. Now I know this doesn't look very appetizing right now, but I promise it's really, really good. Okay. We're just gonna make sure you use clean hands. All right, next up, we're gonna do two tablespoons of finely grated Romano cheese. Um, I'm using a Parmesan Romano blend, but as you can see, it's very finely grated. So since I'm only doing half of the recipe, I'm only gonna do one tablespoon. Oop, got a little clumpy there. There we go. I'm just gonna to toss that in our jar. All right, so our second timer just went off, so we're gonna go ahead and take our chicken out of the oven here. Looking good. Oil on top here. This is going to help it more, be more tender. First, I'm going to grab my oven mitt again. And then we're just going to gently lay it over. Good, by the way. Now, make sure you do this with oven mitts as aluminum does transfer heat pretty quickly, and I don't want you guys getting burned. So, I'm just going to snugly put that around. Perfect, and I'm just gonna shut off my oven here. I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes here. Perfect. All right, we're just gonna toss that in there. Perfect. Next up, we're gonna take half a teaspoon of salt, but again, I'm just doing half of the recipe, so I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon. Um, many measuring spoons do not have a quarter, so we're just gonna kinda eyeball this. There we go. Just toss that in there. Next up, I'm gonna do just a dash of some hot pepper sauce. Um, I personally like this brand. You can use any brand you like. We're just adding a tiny, tiny bit. This just kind of gives us a little bit more dimension. It's not gonna be spicy though. So we're just gonna boop, boop, boop. All right, next, I'm gonna add some buttermilk to this. Um, you're gonna be adding three quarters of a cup, but since I'm only doing half, I'm gonna add three fluid ounces. Make sure you are using your liquid measuring cup. I'm just gonna toss that in. All right, now comes the fun part. We're just gonna pop this lid on here, twist that, make sure it's nice and tight. And now you can go grab your kids, maybe have them take turns shaking this. 
We're just gonna give it a nice good shake. Right, so now that we made our dressing, we're gonna let this hang out in our fridge while we finish chopping. All right, so it's really good if you let this chill. Um, personally, I like to make it the night before, but it's perfectly fine to have it right before this. And tomorrow morning, I get to have a delicious salad. All right, now, all right, now we're gonna cut our lettuce. I'm gonna take this guy off. It should look like that. And then we're just gonna cut it into probably about half inch strips. So we just go down. And this is gonna add some crunch to your lettuce wraps, a little bit of fiber. And again, be careful once you get closer to your fingers. I would definitely recommend adults chopping this portion of it if you're having your children chop before. Perfect. Ready? And then what I like to do is I like to try to evenly disperse some of these less crunchy grain parts with the more crunchy. So I'm gonna pop them in my bowl like that. And this, it's not necessary. I just think it makes it a little bit more tasty so that way somebody's not biting into the soft lettuce or just the crunchy. And I'm gonna take this over to my sink. Don't look at my dishes. <laughs> I'm just gonna give it a rinse with some cold water here. And I'm gonna pick out some of the lettuce that I don't really want to eat. I'm just gonna rinse this. Remember for our chicken just came off, so I'm gonna take this little hat. Perfect, and this is just to make it a little bit more tender. And so I'm gonna grab some tongs and let them cool on it. So I'm just gonna let these cool on this plate. And remember, they don't look very well seasoned, but we're going to be adding sauce and you are more than welcome to season them with the seasons you desire. I'm just trying to make a really general basic chicken, but I think these have plenty of flavor. So next up, we're going to be chopping up some of our toppings. I'm going to be doing a cucumber, some tomato, and an avocado. For the cucumber, I like to go at it at an angle so you get these nice big slices. And there's a little piece of lettuce hanging on. And this could be a really good activity for your kids with their kids' safe knives that they have. And then I'm gonna stop right when I stop seeing some seeds. That's just personal preference. You're more than welcome to keep going. So I'm gonna stop right about there. And I could use this in like smoothies or some salads. Maybe chop it up for some tzatziki sauce. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, so feel free <laughs> to correct me. All right, and then we're just gonna lay this out on our plate. And I will explain why later. Pretty. Next up, we're gonna do our tomato. I like to go at it from this end first. And believe it or not, I actually don't mind eating this part. So I'm just gonna have a little oh, wow. snack here. Yummy. Make sure you wash your produce well before chopping. Um, parents, I would suggest you cutting the tomatoes. Sometimes they can be a little soft, so if you're having a hard time breaking the skin and your tomato's just squishing, I have a little trick. You just pop a little hole in the top right there. And then your knife will just slide through a little more easily. Sometimes I like to really get in there and we just cut around this little belly button here. I know that's not what it's called, but I like to call it that. And then we're going to take our tomato and we're going to also place it on the plate here. And we've got a little theme here going. And this is a really fun recipe to make with your kids because they really get a chance to kind of make this their own. So this is why I'm laying the toppings out here so they can actually choose which ones they want. Um, now I'm gonna do my avocado. And again, parents, I would highly suggest you doing this one. I'm even a little nervous here, and I think Janie over here yeah, is you're too. definitely making me nervous with that. She's gonna really love this next part. <laughs> and be very careful doing that. Sometimes this could be a little slippery, so sometimes I just like to take paper towel to do it because I kind of like having my fingertips, and we're just gonna boop. All right, and we're gonna peel our avocado here. Oh, this looks like a really good one. It's nice and soft, but not too soft. We got like our Goldilocks avocado here. Next up, I'm just gonna chop my avocado. Goes through pretty easy. You can definitely have your kids use their kids' safe knives for this part. And then, a little slippery on my cutting board. Uh-oh, this might be the part when I mess up my little theme here. Oh no! <laughs> okay, and we're just gonna kind of splay that out. Perfect, then we're gonna go to our other half. Oop. Next up, we're gonna 
cut our chicken. Um, I kind of like to use tongs sometimes if it's a little hot, but we'll see how far we can get. All right, so this is always kind of the tricky part is figuring out exactly which way to cut it. See this? <laughs> so we're gonna try and go for, I think this looks good over here. And basically what you're trying to do is make it so nobody gets a really stringy chunk. And All right, <laughs> goodbye fingerprints. <laughs> Here we go. Perfect, there we go, we found it. So I just wanna point out the difference here between this, you see how you don't see any of the little lines in there? It might be kinda of hard to see on camera. Yeah. You're going for this. Should kinda of look like little teeny tiny straws. I don't really know what to compare it to, so <laughs> if you have a better comparison, please let us know. Now comes the part where we make our wraps. And the nice thing about this is you can really give your kids a lot of control about how much they wanna put on. Um, just remember that you do need to wrap these. So I'm gonna grab my tortilla. I'm switching to paper plates because I'm a little tired of doing dishes right now. Feel free to follow my lead here. I know we all have busy lives during the week, etc. cetera. Um, so this is really great because this really gives your kids a lot of control over what they put in. So I'm gonna start with lettuce first. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of my chicken here. Ooh, that looks good. I'm just gonna layer it right there. And then I'm gonna take some of my cucumber here, lay that out, throw on a few tomatoes. Now remember, you can add as much or as little as you want, but you do need to be able to wrap it, which, I don't know, you might be able to see some of my really bad wrapping skills. Oh, we got a runner. So I like a lot of avocado, so I'm gonna just keep adding it to my heart's desire here. Um, avocados have lots of fiber. They also get on your hands. <laughs> and then I'm gonna top it with a little bit of cheese here. And a little more cheese. All right, next up, I'm gonna take the creamy pesto salad dressing that we made, just give it a little shake. Um, as this sits in the fridge, it might get a little thick. Feel free to just add a little bit more buttermilk. Oop. gonna drizzle this on there. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be adding more buttermilk if I let this sit overnight. Perfect. You could also use ranch if your kids are more prone to that, but you're always welcome to make this delicious dressing. It's one of my favorites. All right, so now you get to see my awesome wrapping skills. Um, if this were a burrito, I'd do this a little differently, but it's a wrap, so we're gonna keep it open on one side. So I like to fold it up right here, just kind of create like a little drip carriage, if you will. And then we're gonna gracefully flip this over. And then what I like to do is I like to gather it all right here, kind of give it a little squeeze. Careful not to rip your tortilla. It's actually going a lot better than I was expecting, to be honest. And we roll it up. You didn't see that. <laughs> It should look like that when you're done. Beautiful. All right, so we are going to be making sweet potato wedges to go with our chicken wraps. So I'm just gonna cut the ends off of each um, side. Okay. All right, so in the recipe it says to cut lengthwise. Um, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Woo, and these are hard to cut. Um, <laughs> it says to cut lengthwise, but that's kind of hard for me to do. So if you wanna cut lengthwise, you go for that. We're just gonna do it this way. I would cut it down the center, and then I'd cut the half into length, and then I'm just gonna cut it into wedges here. Be careful not to cut fingers. kind of want them like this size preferably and you kind of want to make them all relatively the same size um it's okay if they're varying a little bit like this one's a little thicker but you know um it doesn't matter too much really just personal preference sweet potatoes are really high in potassium um so yeah get those sweet potatoes in this is one of my favorite things to eat they're so versatile you can eat them with almost any meal honestly Okay. All right, so now we're going to line them on up onto the baking sheet. 
you want to make sure not to let them touch and these you're probably thinking are not all the same size but that's okay that's my poor cutting skills but they're gonna taste the same it's not in this recipe but I really like it um, it's got a little bit of spice it's got um, salt in it and garlic powder which are all in the recipe so I'm just using this totally optional and I'm just gonna use that and then I'm gonna use a teaspoon of cumin nope that's not the right that's not the right one and then um, honestly with the pepper I don't really measure so I'm just gonna do a little boop, 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 like that and that's what it looks like and I'm just gonna kind of stir it up with our little measuring spoon make a mess here All right, so we're just gonna drizzle oil on the top. It can be olive oil, avocado oil. Um, it called for two tablespoons. I'm gonna do, yeah, about two tablespoons. I wanna get it, you just wanna make sure you kinda get it on each one. Um, yeah. All right, now we're gonna put the seasonings on top. You wanna try to make it even, but not the most important thing. See that one I just like put a lot on there so whoever gets that one is going to get a lot of flavor. Um, wow I actually think I made too much seasoning for the amount that we have here. <laughs> All right and then I like to put some salt on the top um, you know just for because salt's good. <laughs> um, okay. All right, and so the recipe calls for two tablespoons of lime. We don't have as much sweet potato here that you will have, so I'm just kind of squeezing a little bit of lime juice on top, and then we'll put it in the oven. All right, so we're putting our sweet potatoes in the oven now for 20 minutes. So let's set the timer on there. Perfect. All right, and so we let it cook for, I said 20 minutes, but I meant 15. So <laughs> anyway, you let it cook for 15 minutes, and then you're just gonna flip them over so that they get equally oops, equally um, cooked on each side. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna throw it back in for about five minutes. I don't know why I skipped that one, but yeah. All right, so now the grand finale. We're putting cilantro on the top because we love cilantro, but that is not a requirement. Um, we, I also may have overdone it with the sweet potatoes. I just kind of cooked them a little much, but that is okay. They still taste delicious. And that is our beautiful meal.